This past weekend, I beat each level of Halo CE on Legendary without dying, and today I'm going to show you how. Let me stop you because I know what you're thinking. Wait a second, Frog, you already beat every Halo CE level on Legendary without dying in your speedrun video. You're correct. This is different though. There are levels like Assault in the Control Room or Keys where you can skip basically the entire level using speedrun tricks. There are also missions like Pillar of Autumn or The Maw where you're doing a lot of running past enemies. So in this video, I'm doing what Rogue Cats refers to as John Wick Runs, where I beat each level as fast as I can, but while playing the full path, meaning I don't go out of bounds or do despawns or any other speedrun strats. Obviously, I'd rather be faster than slower, but I was more concerned with just getting through them deathless rather than having the fastest time possible. Nonetheless, we'll be keeping track of my time Time per level as well as a running total. I'm not going to cover every single detail or else this video would be 10 hours long, but I'll be sure to talk about a few different sections of each level and my strategies as well as a few tips for Halo CE Legendary in general. Like with my speedrun video, I'll link to an unlisted video in the description that shows off all of my level runs completely unedited. If you enjoy this video, then give me a thanks by hitting the like button and without further ado, let's jump in. Pillar of Autumn as the opening level is both an easy level and short. I'm mostly just going to use it to give general tips for the entire game. The very first thing you should do when combat starts is ditch the assault rifle. If you only have the assault rifle and magnum, you're at a major disadvantage against elites. You need a plasma weapon to take down their shields quickly, and I don't just mean overcharges, as you can see I do a lot of just shooting fast with the plasma pistol because unlike in Halo 2 that works in CE. <laughs> On Pillar of Autumn, your strategy for every room is as follows. Abuse plasma grenades. You're only fighting grunts and elites, so there should be plenty more on the ground for you to pick up. I mentioned this in my speedrun video, and I'll mention it again here, but you'll notice I do something called backpack reloading. If you press your reload button twice, switch to a different weapon, and switch back to your first weapon after waiting long enough for it to reload, it'll be fully loaded when you switch back. So instead of having to reload and wait to shoot again, you can keep shooting with your secondary while your primary is reloading in your backpack. This is where I throw something called a distraction grenade. If enemies notice a grenade before they notice you, they'll stand in place and stare at the grenade and die like idiots. A couple grunts survived here, which leads to my last general bit of advice. If you kill all the elites in an area, nearby grunts and jackals who see this will panic and run around. So generally, you should focus on taking out elites first. My final time on Pillar of Autumn was 8 minutes and 9 seconds. POA was a few minutes slower than my speedrun, but it really wasn't that much different. The next level, on the other hand, very different. The differences with Halo start right away. I hadn't crossed this bridge in a long time. This also meant I hadn't had the next fight in a while. The Banshees are easy enough to take out, but the first Covenant squad is actually a tricky fight because you don't have any plasma weapons. The next section was kind of refreshing. Because I wasn't doing drop skip or skipping any dialogue, I didn't have to kill Marines or worry about how many are left alive. Otherwise, this plays out the same way as in the speedrun. It's easiest to kill the waves of enemies as soon as they get off the dropships. You could also camp on top of the structure, which is what I used to do as a child. Ship 1, you stick the two elites and frag the other side, which drops jackals and grunts. Ship 2, you stand under it and plasma right and frag left. Ship 3, you stand in a precise spot and throw a plasma left and frag right. The fourth and fifth ships don't really have easy setups, you just gotta get over there and kill them as fast as you can. This section I have a lot of practice on, and with the marines still being alive, it's actually way easier because dialogue isn't skipped and you have more than enough time to get to each ship before they drop enemies off. Once I got the Warthog is when things really started to get different. For starters, I actually had to clear this section before pressing the button. I didn't know the best way to do it, so I ran over a few enemies and hopped out. I did remember the three red elites hiding around the corner. One bit of advice on this level I'll give would be to get out by this life pod and grab the sniper rifle. It'll make your life way easier. With this not being a speedrun, I couldn't just kill marines, I had to actually save them. In this first area by the cliff edge, all you have to do to save the marines is clear all the enemies. I didn't have any trouble with this. Oh. 
In the second area, by the rocks, multiple dropship waves will spawn that you have to take out. I did play kinda cheap and drive the warthog into the rocks to pick up the sniper passenger, but anyone who says they never tried to drive up into the rocks is a liar. The waves that come in here you can pretty much just run over. The third and last area at the head of the river, you have to clear the enemies who are already spawned and then take out a single dropship wave. Then to close the level, as always, I did a Warthog launch. My final time on Halo was 21 minutes exactly, bringing my total time so far to 29 minutes and 9 seconds. To this point in the game, I hadn't broken a sweat yet. Both of these levels I got Deathless my first try. The next level was the first one that I was nervous about. TNR was the first level I had to attempt more than once. It took me two tries and what messed me up the first time I'll mention when we get to it. In a speedrun, this opening section on the ring I think is the toughest part of the entire level because there's a ton of enemies and you're running through almost all of them. Getting to actually take my time and clear all the enemies out was refreshing. And in my opinion, nothing prior to the gravity lift is difficult. Take your time, you have a sniper rifle with a bunch of extra ammo in your backpack plus a ton more on the ground throughout the level, so use it. On the grab lift waves, a new wave will spawn when there's only one enemy left alive following the dropship. So you can time your grenade throws to take out almost every enemy as they spawn. Inside the ship, there are 10 waves of enemies that come at you, and on Legendary, some of these include Gold Sword Elites. The main thing here is just to clear out each wave as fast as possible so you don't get overwhelmed. An alternate strategy that I would use as a child was to hide behind one of the doors. After these waves, this is where the level completely diverges from my speedrun. Normally, I wouldn't kill these hunters, or clear these hallways, or kill anyone up here, or even go through these hallways, or kill anyone down here. When you get to the hangar, there's normally a grenade jump or three that can get you from the bottom floor all the way to the top. I had to actually stay down here and fight, which was one of the harder parts of the level for sure. After the hangar, I had to go through these hallways, which again, I normally wouldn't. And on the top floor, I actually had a pretty close call. Once you get to the control room though, it's back to being how I normally play. And then you get to the keys rescue. And this part is why I had to retry this level. Actually, let me be more specific. This part. After getting back to the control room and killing the sword elites, more waves spawn and in my first run, Keys grenaded himself. So this time I decided to take him as far away from the doors and the enemies as I could. The rest of the level was a breeze and my final time on TNR was 25 minutes and 36 seconds. This brings my total time so far to 54 minutes and 45 seconds. I hadn't played TNR in a while and it was pretty different. The next level, even more so. If you aren't familiar with Halo speedrunning, the round I use for Silent Cartographer lets you beat it in four and a half minutes. Without telling you how, I'll just say that basically none of what you see on screen for this level are things I'd have to do in a speedrun, including this opening beach fight. I'll repeat my Pillar of Autumn advice, get rid of the assault rifle as soon as possible. I'll also say that when I was younger, I really loved getting the Magnum back here, but now as an adult, I strongly prefer the sniper rifle. There are a lot of elites in the first structure, so this was a bit tricky to clear out. I got to completely obliterate a few jackals, which was fun, and fight a couple pairs of hunters I normally wouldn't fight before going back to the first structure into the silent cartographer. I got an elite to kill himself, otherwise there wasn't anything of note in my descent. Going back up, it was cool to use the active camo to sneak around and kill everything, and I always love wrecking the gold sword elite, but I don't have much else to say on silent cartographer. This was another one that only took me one try to beat Deathless, and my final time on it was 21 minutes and 27 seconds, bringing my total to 1 hour 16 minutes and 12 seconds. Three of the first four levels I got on my first try, and the fourth only took me one extra try because Captain Keys is an idiot. At this point, I thought this was going to be an absolute breeze. Then the next level happened. Assault on the control room. This is a five minute level in the speedrun. You can steal a banshee on the first bridge and fly to the end with no enemy spawned in the entire level. So I hadn't played through this level at all close to how you're supposed to in a while. Ah! <laughs> 
The early sections I still had a pretty good memory of, but there were a few rooms later on where I had absolutely no idea what was coming next. In this first outdoor section, your marines are pretty much screwed, so I would always just hop in the warthog and go straight for the tank. I had a few deaths in the tank section where I had to restart, from getting stuck by grunts, shot by hunters, and one time killing myself. What I eventually figured out was you just gotta take it slow. I'll also just say I think the tank was greatly improved in Halo 2. I'm not a fan of it here. This group of hunters, instead of using the tank against, I felt more comfortable getting out and using the Magnum. When you get back inside, there's a room with a bunch of sleeping grunts, then an elevator, then a room with a gold elite where seemingly after you clear it, a music cue kicks in and a bunch more enemies spawn in. During this time, I had the sniper and Magnum and I was picking up plasma pistols off the ground as I needed them to save ammo. In this half of the level, ammo gets really tight. The second bridge was pretty tough. There are a ton of elites and on the other bridge you have hunters shooting at you. I just had to walk back and forth until I could get each of them to turn around. I did kill the elite that's supposed to get in the banshee on the bridge, so all I had to do to finish the level from here was clear the enemies behind the door to the control room. AOTCR took me a few tries to complete Deathless, but I got through it. My final time was 37 minutes and 29 seconds, making it the longest so far and bringing my total time to 1 hour 53 minutes and 41 seconds. After AOTCR, the next level was what you can call a breather. 343 Guilty Spark is one of my favorite levels in the entire game. Going through the swamp to start, easy enough, not much to talk about here. Inside the Forerunner structure, I would normally glitch into the floor and skip straight to the elevator that goes down after the Flood Reveal. Instead, I had to actually kill everyone. I also got to see the Flood Reveal for the first time in a while. Not to keep bragging on the Assault Rifle, but I had forgotten how long it takes to bring combat forms down when you just have it in the Magnum prior to getting the shotgun. It's not hard until the Flood get guns, it just takes a bit. I did remember which way to go, I didn't get lost or anything. After the second elevator, I knew there'd be at least one shotgun flood spawning, so I wanted to grab the camo and get a shotgun as soon as possible. Once I had a shotgun, the rest of the facility was a breeze. Back in the swamp, instead of running as fast as I could to the structure for evac, I took my time. I did do one speedrun strat though, which was to kill the sentinels at the end. On Legendary, the level end trigger is tied to them dying. After they die, a timer starts for the level to end. I beat 343 Guilty Spark Deathless my first try, and my final time was 15 minutes and 25 seconds. This brings my total time so far to 2 hours, 9 minutes, and 6 seconds. This was a good breather level before the level I was definitely looking forward to the most. This is library. I hate the library. I hadn't played it normally literally in over a decade. When the original Combat Evolved Anniversary came out in 2011, there was an achievement for beating this level on Legendary in under 30 minutes, and I learned the speedrun route back then, and had only played this level that way since. So I did have to restart here twice, and both of my deaths were in the very first section that I hadn't played in years. Once I got past the first door, I knew the rest of the level pretty well, so it wasn't that tough. As opposed to a speedrun, I wasn't running and gunning through areas, I was stopping and clearing everything. Some of these spots really felt like the flood would keep spawning forever, but eventually they would always stop. In terms of beating this level deathless, I think taking it slow is probably easier. But getting the best time, it's definitely faster to run through everything, even if you die a few times. The toughest part of the level that, again, I hadn't done in over 10 years, was the 92nd door on the third floor. You can hide in the corner where zero enemies will notice you, but I thought that went against the spirit of this video, so I did it normally. Normally. On the fourth floor, there's another one of these sections where you hold out this time for 45 seconds and I had an extremely close call. Those were definitely the two hardest parts of the level, otherwise it wasn't that bad, just long. My time was 39 minutes and 25 seconds, bringing my total to 2 hours, 48 minutes and 31 seconds. This was the second longest level in the run behind only the next level. Two Betrayals. This is what I always remembered being the toughest level in the game, and after playing it again, I think it definitely is. This level took me the longest to complete Deathless. It didn't take that many tries, though. Wait. 
I wasn't keeping count, but I probably died around five times. The problem is, whenever I would die, it would always happen towards the end of the level when I'd already be over half an hour in, which really sucked. The first half of the level, which I would call everything before the second canyon, I didn't think was that hard. It's mostly just about taking your time, and I have practiced the classic tuba trail speedrun route that doesn't involve flying a banshee through walls, so I did know I was in each room ahead of time. Once you enter the second canyon and get into the ghost, this is where I think the level gets really tough. I actually lost a run at this spot because my banshee was at one red and I parked it on the left where your new banshee is supposed to spawn so I didn't get a new banshee. Piece of advice, don't do that. After you blow up the second phase pulse generator, a bunch of floods spawn in, and here I did use a speedrun strap for clearing this door so you can run through minus the run through part. It took me everything I had to not fly the banshee through this door. Then I got to the last canyon, and here, this was my only run to get to this point, I had no idea how to approach any of this. The first section, the flood killed all the covenant for me, so that was cool. The second section, I took my time and cleared it, no issue. The third and last section though, my goodness. I want you to look at the timer. 32 minutes and 50 seconds. I'll go ahead and tell you my final time on this level was 50 minutes and 45 seconds. This is basically the end of the level, and it took me almost 20 minutes. At first I had the sniper, then I saw a bunch of wraiths, then I ran back to grab rockets. I took out one wraith and ran out of rockets, so I ran back for more. After taking out the wraith and a few more enemies with the rockets I had left, I ran back for the sniper rifle. I only saw one elite, a few grunts, and a couple jackals, so I started taking them all out. I used up all my sniper ammo, so I decided to run back and grab a magnum for the couple of hunters that were left. When I got back, I was about to take them out when suddenly a gold elite came running up out of nowhere, then a couple stealth elites started shooting at me. It was at this point I realized I screwed up. I had no sniper, and no rockets, and there were a ton of extra elites that either I just didn't notice or spawned in later. After using up most of my magnum ammo, I ran back only to realize there was no more ammo. I was stuck with my current magazine plus 20 more rounds. I did though get lucky and find a plasma pistol. I managed to noob combo every elite still alive except the gold elite who kept dodging me. With only him and the hunters left, I decided to do something risky. And booyah, rest of the level breeze. Like I said, my time was 50 minutes and 45 seconds, by far my longest. This brings my total time so far to 3 hours, 39 minutes, and 16 seconds. This was by far the toughest level to beat Deathless, but the next level took me the most attempts. Keys was another tough level, partly because I haven't played through it normally in a long time. On the speedrun, you can skip straight to the end almost, and it's a 3 minute level, and partly because it's just difficult. Tuba Trails is more challenging, but part of that I think is due to the length. Section to section, Keys is probably as tough as TB, if not more so. This level probably took me around a dozen attempts. Every single one of my deaths was after you fall out of the ship back on the ring. This stuff is all really hard. In a couple of these sections, the flutter on infinite spawners until you push up, so that definitely adds to it. My first run where I made it back on the ship was the one that I ended up completing. I think the level gets easier from here, and I played it super safe. I did have one really risky section. After finding keys, there's the part where the Special Operations Covenant come through the door, and there's also a ton of Flood coming from the other side. My strategy was to run immediately to the back so the Flood and Covenant would fight each other. The problem is that the Covenant don't trigger without you going to the door. So because I waited, there were a ton of Flood right by the door I had to go to. I had to do this. To end the level, you're supposed to run past a bunch of spec ops elites to get into a banshee. After all my failed attempts to that point, I didn't want to risk dying and restarting, so instead I got a plasma pistol and a magnum and I killed every single elite. And that's keys. Beating a deathless took me 23 minutes and 22 seconds. With one level to go, my time is 4 hours, 2 minutes and 38 seconds. After the last two levels, the final level was a cakewalk. I completed the Maw in two tries. My only reset was because I killed myself like an idiot. I know barely any of the speedrun tricks on this level, so my route here was almost identical to what I did in the speedrun, the difference being I slowed down to kill everything. This room was probably the toughest. There are a couple of spec ops elites at distance, so taking them out was kind of tricky. Otherwise, like I said, not very difficult. The reactor room, I did do two reactors at once, because if you didn't know you could do that, you absolutely can. First, we need to pull back the exhaust couplings. That will expose the shaft that leads to the primary 
drive. Good. Step one complete. We have a straight shot into the fusion. On the Warthog run, I did one trick that you can't complete the mall without doing. That's actually a strap, by the way. If you do a 360, you won't flip over there. Otherwise, there's a pretty good chance that you will. It also just looks cool. That's the Maw, and that's every Halo CE level deathless on Legendary. My time on the Maw was 13 minutes and 58 seconds, bringing my final time to 4 hours, 16 minutes and 36 seconds. My run obviously wasn't straight through, but for comparison, Cody Miller's GDQ speedrun where he had to lower the difficulty from Legendary to Normal took about 4 hours and 19 minutes. What did I learn from my John Wick runs? First, I'm a lot better at Legendary than I used to be. It used to be a struggle for me to beat some of these levels on Legendary, period. Now, for the most part, I didn't have trouble beating them deathless until I got to two betrayals and keys. I got a couple comments saying this, and I've seen it on other people's speedrun content, but you'll get comments saying stuff like, these speedrun tricks are cheating, or you're doing skips because you aren't good enough to play normally. So what was easier, speedrunning or beating each level deathless without speedrun tactics? I think this by far. This I did on Saturday and Sunday. That speedrun video was a month of practice. Obviously, once you learn some of the tricks, there are levels in the speedrun that are absolutely easier than playing them regularly. Namely, Assault in the Control Room 2 Betrayals and Keys. But with the time spent learning tricks plus the other seven levels in the game, yeah, this was easier. I beat each of these levels a lot faster than anyone who I've seen post a walkthrough, and some of them that I've watched give not so good advice, so if there is interest, I might do something like that that's more in-depth than an actual walkthrough, but yeah. If you watched this far, I'll assume you liked the video, so hit the thumbs up. That's it for this one. I'll catch you next time.